Hi, in this video, I'm going to be solving, uh, I'm going to try and solve two more past per questions of vectors, but I'll definitely be solving one. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Let's, let's start right away. So this is a question from May, June, 2019, paper two, variant one. Okay. And, uh, it's, uh, I'm not going to say too difficult, but yeah, it's, it's a fairly average question. So it says here in the diagram, PQ is equals to 4P. So as you're reading the question, make sure that you keep looking at the diagram too. So PQ equals to 4P. So I'll write it down over here. Uh, QR is equals to 3Q. So that means all of this is 3Q. So I'll write this down also. PT is equals to P plus 2Q. So I'll write this down, P plus 2Q. And then the question says that QU is equals to 2 thirds of QR. All right. And PT is equals to 2 thirds of PS. Okay. So we'll come to this. Uh, we'll use it as we, as, we, as we go along. It says express as simply as possible in terms of P and or QPS. Okay. So PS. Now that means I'll have to make use of this information. So this, the question told me that PT is equal to 2 thirds of PS. That means if I make PS the subject, so PS is going to be equal to 3 over 2 cross multiplying, okay, 3 times PT is equal to 2 times PS. So 3 over 2 times PT, okay. So all I got to do is I got to take PT, which is again given in the question and just multiply it by 3 upon 2. So 3 upon 2 times P plus 2Q. Now you can leave this as it is. No, and wait, uh, the question does say that to express it as simply as possible. So it's best that you simplify it. So this becomes 3 upon 2P. Now, 3 upon 2 times 2 is going to be 6 upon 2 for a while, and then 6 upon 2 is 3, so plus 3q, okay? So, part A done, and uh, pretty simple. Part B. Part B says SR, okay? Now, let's see what I can do if I want SR. So, SR is basically this vector. I'll use a different color so you can distinguish. So, SR is right over here. So, what I can do is, what I'm thinking of is, that how about I go from S to P, and then from P to Q, and then from Q to R. Now, uh, you may be thinking that we don't have S, P, but we do have P, S. Okay, so all I gotta do is just change the sign. And this is a two-mark question, so that means it's, it requires a bit of working also. So, basically, here's what I've decided, that I'm gonna go from S to P, and then I'm gonna go from P to Q. Yeah, and then I'm gonna go from Q to R. So, S to P is gonna be minus 3 upon 2P minus 3q okay i've just multiplied the entire expression by minus plus pq which is going to be 4p plus qr which is going to be 3q okay now it's paper two so feel free to use a calculator so what i'm doing now is i'm doing minus 3 over 2p plus 4p so let's do that minus 3 divided by 2 or simply minus 1.5 plus 4 so that's 5 upon 2 so yeah 5 upon 2p and there you go that's it minus 3q plus q will just take care of each other and there you have it po positive 5 upon 2p is your final answer so yeah that was that was pretty simple okay now this is where it gets interesting it says state the name of the special quadrilateral pqrs so have a good look at pqrs before we decide before we uh, state the name of it so pqrs is this quadrilateral now remember we just figured out sr and it turned out to be what? It turned out to be 5 upon 2p. Okay, so 5 upon 2. And now that I have SR, I can compare the quadrilateral and make a um, draw a conclusion. And I'll tell you how to do that. So if you look at PQ, PQ is 4p, which means it's 4 times of p. Okay, p is a vector in a certain direction, and PQ is 4 times of it. Okay, and SR is 5 over 2 or you can say 2.5p so that means this also is in the direction of p okay but it's 2.5 times so pq and sr are both in the same direction what's different is their magnitude so what happens when you have two vectors that are in the same direction and it's only the magnitudes that are different that means that they are parallel so so basically we're looking at a quadrilateral that has opposite lengths as one pair of uh, parallel sides and in what quadrilateral does that happen? That happens in a trapezium. So the answer is, whoops, sorry about that. Zoom out. Yeah. So the answer is trapezium. Okay. But the question here also wants a reason. And the reason is, and it says using vectors. Okay. So, so you've got to be very, very specific. So you, you're going to say that PQ and SR, so PQ is equals to what? PQ is equals to 4P and sr is equals to 5 over 2p which means 
that PQ and SR are parallel and that's it that's all you got to do done now comes part three which says find in its simplest form the ratio of PQ and SR so this this basically means that you have to find the ratio of their magnitude so PQ remember is 4P so if you have a vector which is uh, which doesn't really have add or addition or subtraction okay it's just a single vector like for example here it's just 4p there's nothing that's it's not it's not in terms of p and q it's just p okay so its vector is simply going to be the coefficient of p okay in this case so that it's magnitude sorry as i said vector so its magnitude is going to be 4 4 here and you don't have to really work it out i'll show you how that is so if you wanted to work out the magnitude you would basically do square root of 4 squared okay and then the square root and square will just take care of each other so this will give you the magnitude of pq and then if you want the magnitude of sr you'll do square root of 5 upon 2 squared and again these two will just take care of each other so so this turns out to be 4 ratio 5 upon 2 now when we're dealing with ratios that means that they have both of them have to be in integer form so it's the upon 2 that's troubling us so what we do is we can think of it this way that we're multiplying both sides by 2 and when you do that, 4 times 2 becomes 8. And these two, uh, the denominator of 5 upon 2 gets cancelled out. And that's exactly what we wanted. So our final answer is 8 is to 5. Okay, or you can simply do this in your calculator. All you got to do is you got to do 4 divided by 5 divided by 2. Okay, and there you go. You get 8 upon 5. Okay, so yeah. That was part A. Now we come to part B. Now in part B, again, it's a question that's related to vectors. But this time, you have a bit of coordinate geometry involved also. Okay and uh, it's not it's not exactly difficult in fact i think questions like these are a lot easier as compared to when you have questions that are dealing purely with vectors okay again that's my opinion and anyway so yeah so it says uh find ad now what do you have you have ab you have bc you have cd and you got to find ad okay so you gotta come up with a rule through which maybe by adding the vectors or subtracting them you end up with ad so what i can think of is ab plus bc plus cd will give you ad so that's that's all i'm going to do i'm going to do uh, i'm going to add the three vectors so three by two and six minus two plus minus seven and minus three so i just got to sum this up i think i can do this without a calculator so three plus six is nine nine plus minus seven is going to be two minus two plus minus two is going to be zero and zero plus minus three is going to be minus three so there you go you have ad and pretty simple then it says find the magnitude of bc so if you want to find the magnitude you got to square the x and the y components and sum them up so the square of 6 is 36 and the square of minus 2 is 4 so 36 plus 4 is 40 and the square root of it well let me write square root 40 first the square root of it is 6.32 correct to three decimal places oh sorry three significant figures okay now it says here given that e is the midpoint of bc find ae okay so before before you start solving this or before you do start doing any any form of trial and error what you should do is you should try and visualize what the question is is telling you so you're given the vector from b to c which is six and minus two so that means it's going to look something like this again you don't have to be too accurate okay but it's just that right words should look right words and left words or downwards or upwards should uh, i mean the vector should be in the same direction as its components are so six minus two basically means six units to the right and two down so that's what it should look like ideally so here's bc e is the midpoint of bc so that means e is somewhere over here okay now considering the fact that you already know that bc is six and minus two what you can work out is be why because e is the midpoint of bc right so that means be is simply going to be half of bc okay which means that it's going to be half of 6 and minus 2 now remember this half is going to get multiplied by both the components 6 as well as minus 2 so it's going to be 3 minus 1 and this right here is vector be okay so you're one step uh you're, you're almost there okay it's just one step away from the final answer now you have to find out ae so you can do ab plus be and using head to tail rule this becomes ae now do i have ab yeah i do 3 and 2 do i have be of course I do. It's 3 and minus 1. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 2 plus minus 1 is 1. So your final answer is 6 and 1. Okay. So this was not 
too difficult okay now there's another question that i have in mind which i'm going to solve for you guys but not in this video i'll do that in the next video so yeah that's that's all for this video uh, i will see you guys in the next one until then take care bye bye